baby kisses me. Hey, how you doing, Justin? Back with you today to check out Heartbeat by Buddy Holly, one of those beautiful old-time ballads. Relatively simple to play. It's not a bad one for beginners because you can simplify the rhythm, but also grow with it. So as you get a bit more confident with your rhythm skills, you can start to add in a little bit more complicated strumming patterns. And then much further on down the line, you can add in your little... Uh stuff as well which I will take you through but this lesson is primarily going to be aimed at beginners so I'm mostly going to be talking about beginner stuff so there are only three chords in this song they are A, D and E if you're struggling with how to play any of those chords or you need some extra help on getting your chord changes a bit faster any of that sort of stuff or you're worried about finger pain the beginner course over on the website is completely free do go and check it out you've got a really comprehensive practice schedule all laid out for you loads of tips on how to get your chord changes faster how to minimize finger pain all of that important beginner stuff which you're probably likely to be experiencing if you're doing this tune so let's get to a close-up check out how to play it so the very intro you have that little guitar riff going at the same time of course it's going to be so just a bar on each of those chords going a e a e and then the verse starts so we have a chord a I do you D when my E chord kisses A da 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 E do 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 A da 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 E da 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 A chord Why does my D stay so E my memor A da 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 E da 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 A da 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 D a. So just at the end, the second time through there, it goes D chord to the A chord for half a bar each. If you're struggling with that, I just play the D chord and just stay on D for the whole time for that whole bar. Uh, it is quite a quick change to do the D to the A and then the next chord that we're going to is going to be the E chord. So let me run that verse one more time and then we'll move on into the chorus. So A chord why do you D when my E chord's kissing? A da 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 da, E da 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 da, A da 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 da, E da da. Then it's the second time through. A for two bars D, then it's E and then two. A da da da, E da 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 da, A. And here's the quick change D, A, D li pat. The D it's go love A chord for two bars da, To D the thing and A the going to E Back to the verse And then it's D going to E and back to A da 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 and so on the arrangement of the song just bounces between those two sections of course you've got the guitar solo playing there as well which is just playing that melody part i'll take you through that in just a second as well although not a full on detailed version just the the basic elements that you need to play that riff so the first step whenever you're playing a song like this is being able to make those chord changes with just the strum where the chords change making sure that you get your chord changes in time there's no point in practicing a rhythm pattern a strumming pattern and then pausing it that's a, like a really really bad habit if you were going to go that's really bad that's a, that's kind of worse than not practicing strumming at all okay because you're training your strumming hand to stop the key ingredient with strumming is keeping the hand moving all the time even if the chords went wrong you'd be better off going kind of entire like you could kind of sing along with that whereas if you put those big pauses in you can't one of the big things you'll find if you're practicing using the Justin Guitar Lessons and Songs app with those guitar karaoke play along things is that the track doesn't stop the track won't wait for you to change your chords it'll keep going it'll force you to stay in time and increase the speed that you can change your chords but as well it'll really help you develop a solid sense of rhythm Okay, so step one, just being able to play the chords in time, either along with the backing track or along with the original recording. 
just doing one strum. Then I would ne recommend next moving on to just down strums on the beat. It's a fairly fast tune, so you'd have A, two, three, four, one, two, then two, D, then two, E, and back to A, da, 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 E, da, 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 da. Trying to get that arm moving nice and consistently here. It wants to feel kind of like a pendulum, not like that this jerky thing it's got to be even at this speed it's still trying to get that feeling of moving consistently all the time it should feel relaxed as well if it's not feeling relaxed something is going wrong try not holding your pick so tight is a common thing for beginners they hold the pick really tight and then you get this as soon as you get all of that tension you can hear the sound goes all a bit horrible as well because the pick's getting caught in the string so trying to keep that arm really nice and relaxed and nice and evenly paced so playing along with either the backing track or the original recording i think is the secret to getting the rhythm solid if you want to take it to that next place and incorporate like a little bit more authentic rhythm pattern this isn't for beginners so if you're very early doors in grade one of my my uh, beginner course you probably don't want to be going near this rhythm yet you maybe write it down for later or make a note that you're going to revisit this lesson a little bit later on and come back and do it uh, because it's using a series of upstrokes which can be a little bit weird the kind of it's not actually the strumming pattern on the record the, the record is uh I'm not really sure there's an acoustic -y sort of strumming part there but the pattern that works really well is down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and. Now, if you're learning a pattern for the first time, you want to do it without the chords. So just mute all of the strings. So you've just got a nice muted sound and then practice really slowly but in time. So one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and noticing that the down strums are happening on the numbers and the up strums are happening on the ands. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and you should be trying to tap your foot still on the beat as well, on the numbers. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and... And if it goes wrong, I don't know if you noticed, I just played a bit on the downbeat, I went... It doesn't matter. If you keep moving, it doesn't matter. One, two, and three, and four, and no one's going to notice if you add an extra strum or miss one. As long as you're keeping the hand moving consistently, that's going to be the key thing. If that's too fast, slow it down. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and... This is the kind of practice that's really, really good for you. So if you're still struggling with your strumming and your chord changes, and you're going to try and sing it, say, it's just not going to happen. And that's to be expected. That's not like you're not very good or you haven't practiced enough. It just takes a bit of time to get used to this. You want to try and get it to what I'm doing now, which is where you can not really have to think about the strumming, especially if you're going to sing. You just, and that's just a repetition thing. You've got to keep doing it over and over again. One, two, and three, and four, and one, three, and four. And really working on it on its own. Because as soon as you put the chords to it, you'll start thinking about the chords. You can't help it. That's just what happens. We all do it. Down, up, one two and three and four and then once you can do that have a go at applying it to the chord progression uh, applying the strumming pattern to the chords but just real slow so a up up down up down up up down up d up up down up d up up down up one two and three and four and one two and three and four and Something else I should point out as well, because lots of beginners freak out over this, is the up strum after four, the last strum in the bar, is very often going to be open strings while you're changing chords. So you're kind of going down, up, up, down. This is on the A, up, up, down, up, D. Okay, now I'm exaggerating by lifting all my fingers off just to make a point of it, but if I do... I'm deliberately accenting, which you wouldn't do. But 
but that is what happens when you're doing that sort of strumming pattern. That's uh, especially if you're using your anchor finger, that note won't uh, won't be ringing out because you have your finger down for all of those different chord changes. Uh, but it's okay to hit those open strings on that. It, it is what happens on most like professional recordings that we all know and love. There's that little open string thing in between the chord changes. So don't let yourself get freaked out over that. So. Next thing would be to apply that strumming pattern again all of the way through the whole tune. Of course, the end of the, the second time through the verse progression, where you've got those two chords in the bar, you probably just want to go down, down on the D, down, down on the A, and then to the E. So you'd have... And back to normal again. So just on that little bit, it's probably going to be easier to just do down strums on one, two, three, and four, just for that bar to tidy through. Uh, like I said, I would recommend that you get solid with the rhythm first and being able to play it along at tempo or even less slower tempo, but at least in time without stopping, without struggling with the chord changes and being able to do the basic rhythm before you even think about trying to add this more complicated pattern, which has got a whole bunch of successive up strums, which is something most beginners uh, find a little bit tricky. Now, I am going to take you through that little riff as well, just because the really nice one to do for most beginners it's going to be very difficult but if you really love the song and you fancy a bit of a challenge there's no harm in having a go at that you know i do recommend for beginners that you spend some time doing the stuff you should do and sometimes just doing stuff that you really like the sound of because you want to have a bit of a go at it and you're, if you're a big buddy holly fan this could be a, a pretty cool riff to have a little bit of a go at is going to work better on electric guitar or you're going to need a cutaway which is this bit of the acoustic guitar where it's cut away because we're quite far up the neck so let's get to a close-up and have a quick look at that as well So that's the main riff, 1st finger, 12th fret of the thinner string, 3rd finger, 14th fret of the 2nd string. The hard part will be lifting the 3rd finger around so you don't get this, ok, 3rd finger is going to have to go right on its tip. We play those, uh, 1 and 2 and, that's the rhythm, 1 and 2 and 3, on beat 3, Second finger is going to move up to the uh, 14th fret, or go down on the 14th fret, and third finger will go up one fret to the 15th. So, one and two and slide it up one, second finger goes down, and then back. So, third finger doesn't leave. I must say, I'm lifting the whole lot up a little bit. One and lift. Just to get the notes to finish there. I'm, trying, I'm lifting the fingers up so you can hear that it the notes stop when I left my fingers up, but I'm not lifting them off the strings like that, just lift. And then it's the same shape down two frets, so first finger's in the tenth fret. Again, play, play, lift, play, up two frets, back to the starting one, and back. One and two and three, four, one and two and three, four, one and two and three, Now, he also plays it in another place, the same notes, but in the verses. He's usually a little bit of a different riff, and it's this. Now, to do that, we're using a little bit of a thing called palm mute, where you rest just the inside edge of your hand on the strings just a little bit. The notes come out a little bit muted. First finger is going in the fifth fret of the second string. Second finger is going on the sixth fret of the third string. And then you use third and fourth fingers to go down in the seventh fret on the same strings. Then it slides back two frets. And this time you're just going to move your whole hand between the third fret, fifth fret, and third. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson today. I really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button if you're over on YouTube. Signing up on the website is free, so do go and check that out. Remember, the dashboard over on the website is amazing for beginners. You really focus your practicing. It shows you exactly what stuff you should be practicing for how long. You can track all your statistics. It's loads of fun. You can keep track of the songs that you're learning. It's, it, it really is a pretty special thing, and it's completely free, so please do go and check that out. If you love the song and you want to jam along with the back and track, do go and check out uh, the Adjusting Guitar Lessons and Songs app, which isn't free 
because we have to pay royalties obviously to the song rights holders as well but do go and check it out it's nothing better that's going to accelerate your beginner journey than that app i promise you that the 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 playing along with the backing tracks is the thing that's going to make you good fast and be able to play songs so hopefully i'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon you'll take care of yourselves out there and have a fantastic day bye-bye